Star Wars 7x7 episode 1930 today. A quick salvage run is anything but. This is the Resistance briefing for season 2, episode 2 of Star Wars Resistance, and we're going to cover seven shocking facts from the episode. Punch it. Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode and it is a full spoiler episode so if you do not want a quick salvage run spoiled for you because you haven't seen it yet for some reason then by all means skip this episode but if you're okay with me getting into the shocking details then let's dive right in. First of all, Oh my goodness, Kaz's family is still alive. I think that is the biggest pleasant shock of the episode. And that has to do with the whole Hosnian Cataclysm. This is the branding of the Starkiller base attack on the Hosnian system as seen in The Force Awakens. So apparently, even though his dad is a senator, they happen to be off planet when the Hosnian Cataclysm happened. And so everything is a-okay, but because of what's happened with Kaz and the Colossus, bounty hunters may have been informed about Kaz and about his family for that matter. And so this kind of introduces a new and dangerous potential element to appear in future episodes of the show. Now, the episode turns on this comm link that Kaz got to Tam and the Second shocking fact is that Tam is caught with it by none other than Jace Rucklin, who is apparently now a First Order cadet and working for them. The last time we saw that little scoundrel who was voiced by Elijah Wood, when he wasn't causing trouble for Kaz and everybody else, he was being led away by the First Order, and it didn't seem like he was actually becoming part of the First Order, but now he's an actual recruit, and he says he's going to turn Tam in if she doesn't turn this comlink in first, which puts Tam in a rock and a hard place, and so your third shocking fact is that she actually does turn Kaz in and says, yeah, he slipped this on me, and the First Order decides, oh yeah, we can actually do something with this, which causes problems, of course, because that's how TV shows work. <laughs> Meanwhile, the fourth shocking fact, and you know what, this may not have been so much of a shock because it's kind of what I think we all might have expected, but we get to see the aftermath of the Dakar engagement that happened in the beginning of The Last Jedi. And so to see a giant fiery spot on the surface where the Resistance base once stood, and to see all the wreckage around the system, I mean, that's still kind of jarring in its way. We left Dakar so fast in The Last Jedi, and there's been nothing from a storytelling perspective talking about Dakar afterward, that, you know, once they arrive and see how bad things are, yeah, it's actually kind of startling in its way. So instead of being able to regroup with the Resistance, now the Colossus is faced with figuring out what its next step is going to be. And they don't have enough coaxium to make another jump into hyperspace, but they get the bright idea of getting some off the Dreadnought, or what remains of the Dreadnought. And so they manage to talk the pirates that are on the ship into going on to the Dreadnought and saying, well, you can keep all the weapons and tech you find on there, like that'll be your looting, but get us the coaxium, which they do. But I guess maybe not so shockingly, <laughs> and yet it is a bit of a shock. The First Order arrives very quickly because they've managed to decrypt the comlink and figure out that a signal was coming from the Dakar system. So they show up and try to put an end to the Colossus once and for all. The Aces end up getting involved and trying to fly cover while a mass of TIE fighters launch into the system and try to take out the Pirates, take out the Dreadnought, take out the Aces, take out the Colossus. The Colossus even comes under heavy fire, but of course they manage to escape. They get the Coaxium in on time and jump to hyperspace after taking significant hull damage and getting their shields knocked out. So it's not a clean getaway, but we actually don't know where they're going. We just know that they jump to hyperspace, but we don't know where to. And then there's your sixth shocking fact, which is the fact that Doza and Yeager 
are actually suspicious of how the First Order managed to get there so fast. And, you know, it's suggested that, hey, maybe the First Order left something behind after the battle to detect any ships coming into the system. And, you know, they're kind of like, well, I guess that's a possibility, but, you know, maybe that's not exactly the answer. So they're already suspicious of something bad going on and naturally Kaz is not revealing anything about the comlink even though his pirate friend Sonara has found out about it on their end. So yeah, this comlink thing has become a real open secret. And your seventh and final shocking fact is that there are private discussions happening between Commander Pyre and Agent Tyranny of the First Order about Tam. Pyre wants to have her reconditioned to ensure her loyalty and ultimately make her expendable. But Agent Tyranny is advocating against that, saying that Tam still has the potential for delivering the Colossus into the hands of the First Order. But... As you see Tam's expressions and experience as she watches the attack on the Colossus in this episode, you can tell that her heart is not in it and they're already laying the foundation for her saying, I screwed up and defecting from the First Order and somehow getting back to the Resistance. And so there you go, that's the episode in a nutshell. They get to Dakar, Dakar is messed up, they manage to get Coaxium off a of Dreadnought and leap into hyperspace before the First Order can take advantage of this comlink situation and take him out. As for next week and the next episode, well, there is a logline that's already been revealed for that, and I will share that with you after the break. Stay tuned. Hey Rebel Razor, I've made some changes to the Asteroid Belt level at patreon.com slash SW7X7 and they are all with sponsors in mind. So if you want to get the word out about your business, your product, your service to a dedicated Star Wars audience, then please check out patreon.com slash SW7X7 and look for the Asteroid Belt level for details. Again, that's patreon.com slash SW7X7. Welcome back. So, the next episode is called Live Fire, and the Aces are about to get two new recruits, specifically Jarek Yeager and Kaz Ziono. They are now about to bring the Aces total up to seven, and Yeager is going to be teaching them flying skills and helping them become better combat pilots. Meanwhile, mirroring that situation, Tam Revora is going to be learning more about what it's like to be a First Order TIE Fighter pilot. And that's as much as they're saying about it right now. It seems like there's not necessarily going to be any direct Resistance First Order engagement in this next episode, but they're going to be laying the groundwork for more conflict to come. And so we will talk about that on the next Resistance Briefing after that episode debuts. But for now... That is going to do it for our Resistance Briefing, this time on a quick salvage run, and it's also our time up for this episode of the show, too. So thank you so much for joining me for it, as always, and may the Force be with you, wherever in the world you may be. This podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.